Hi everyone, and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be working on our tower defense game. We're going to be getting our build menu working, and yeah, let's roll the intro and get right into it. So where we left off in the previous episode is we had this menu at the top. We could click the build button and close it, and that was it. Uh, we're going to hook a bunch of these things up, so let's close this and take a look at how I've set things up. I've already gone ahead and set up a bunch of different objects. You can see that inside here we have a user interface, and inside the user interface we have the towers. We have a parent tower, a machine gun, a bomb, and a slow. And basically, we'll go through each one of these, but this parent tower is the parent of these three children here. So every code that we put in here, all three of these objects are actually going to get. I've also set up an object mouse and an object placeable, but we will check these out as we go on. The only other thing I've done really is inside the towers, I've made these towers, they are just placeholders. There is nothing in these right now. They are completely empty objects. And like I said, 100% placeholders, so we can use them later on. Let's actually figure out how we can get this thing going. So first off, let's take a look at object mouse. Our object mouse is gonna be responsible for drawing the selected sprite or the selected tower once we've selected it from the build menu. So this is a pretty easy object where we just have a selected sprite. And as long as our selected sprite does not equal no one, then we want to draw that sprite based on the X and Y coordinates of our mouse. Now I want this particular guy to happen or be placed in the room every single time. So if we go into the room initialize and we look at the create event here, this is where we need to add the mouse because this object is responsible for setting up our room for us. So what I want to do is just copy the instance create depth, keep it as the UI layer, and then just add the object mouse. So this will automatically create the mouse in our room, and we don't have to worry about adding it in each time. So we are all done here, so let's close this. And then the next thing we want to do is go into user interface and go into panels and open up the UI shop panel here. So in the previous episode, we set up all this information. I added a new comment here called towers. And what we wanna do is basically the same thing as the close button. We are going to create a instance for each tower, and then we are going to associate the parent for each tower to the shop panel, which will give us access to the hide function here. So I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna do the machine gun because this one's gonna be kind of our first one. Tower machine gun, copy that variable underneath. And then we just need to change the object, which we want to have in here to the object UI tower machine gun. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the bomb and the same thing for the slow. And now we have associated each of these towers with the panel so we can call the hide when we need it. So we're done with the shop panel. Let's actually close this because there's nothing else to do here. If we open up the tower parent, for the UI, you can see that we have some default information. We have the name, how much each is gonna cost, and then the image that is going to be associated with each of these towers. We also have a parent, so this will be set up for the shop like we just did. So once again, that shop panel is gonna set itself to the parent. And then we have an X and Y offset, and that will be helping us place it on the actual shop panel. So if we open up, let's say I take this information here and go to the machine gun and I want to right click and inherit the create event. And now we're going to change some of this information. So parent, I don't need to worry about. The name is not default tower. It's going to be machine gun. The cost is going to be 10 coins and the image can stay as machine gun. Now our offset X and offset Y, if we take a look at the panel itself and we edit the sprite, we are looking at the middle center. However, we are also using a nine slice. So this offset is gonna help us position each of these items within the center. So that means I wanna start with the offset by adding 16, and then I believe it's 96, just let me check my notes. Okay, my notes have been checked, and yes, it's 96 pixels down. So what's gonna end up happening is if we load up a room, we're gonna to go to our panel and go over 16 pixels and then down 96 pixels and place that machine gun right in the middle here. Now I've already gone ahead and done it for the bomb. So the bomb is 16 and 176 and the slow tower is 16 and 258. 
If we go back to the machine gun, the next thing we want to do is the left release. We also want to inherit this and let's just add a little to do. We'll say to do build tower. And this is so we don't really forget. Now, everything we've done has already been set up. So if I hit F5, we should hopefully see these three towers once I click the build menu. But you can see that we have a non-existing sprite here. So let's check this out. Inside the parent draw of zero, let's go into this guy and go into the draw. So when we say draw self, what's actually happening for the machine gun is we didn't assign any sprite. So it's throwing an error. So let's assign a sprite here. We will assign the machine gun sprite. And now let's run our game one more time. Our game loads up. And if we click the build menu, we have the three different towers here. However, we can't click them and it's missing some of the vital information, specifically which one is which and how much each costs. So if we go into the parent, inside the draw event, we're drawing each of those sprites and then we are setting the alignment. Next, we wanna draw some text. So we'll say that draw text on the X position and then the Y position. And I wanna move this underneath the sprite. So to move it underneath the sprite, I will add 24 pixels and then I will just say, draw the name of the sprite. For the cost, I'll copy and paste it, except I wanna move it down 40 pixels. And instead of saying name, I wanna say price. And then I will pass in a string value of the cost. And now if I hit F5, because we are using a parent-child relationship, if I click on the gear, you can see each of the ones now have a name and they have their associated costs. Now let's check out what happens when we left click. When we left click, or I should say left release on each ones, we need to check the price, deduct the amount, show where we can place the actual towers, hide the shop panel, and finally attach the sprite to the mouse. So this is all pretty easy to do. If we want to check the price, we have access that. We can have a global check. So global cash amount. If this is less than the cost, then we know that we can come in here and do this information. Otherwise, we could easily just do a quick exit. We could just say return. So that means that nothing is going to happen below here if we just return from this function. If we have more than the cost, then we will deduct it from our amount. And next we want to do is show these object placeables. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of them within our room. So I could just say with this particular object and we'll check out how this works in one second, but we just basically want to say show. Now the next thing, if you remember when we created the shop panel, we assigned the parent to each of the objects or each of these towers. So that means I could say with that parent run the hide function, which will hide the shop. And then next we will have a to do to do mouse because we will come back to that. Let's take a look at how we can work on the placeables. The object placeable is a little object here that basically sits within our map and it lets the player know where they can place the towers. If we take a look at the sprite, it has a regular frame and then a hover frame. And what we are doing is a trick that we've done with the buttons. So we're currently setting the image speed to zero so that it can't be flashing. And then we are using a Boolean to say whether or not we are hovering. So obviously if we go mouse enter, hover is true, mouse leave, hover is false. And then in the step event, we're just changing the image index to that Boolean, which will represent a zero index or a one index. And that will refer to our sprite being on frame zero or frame one. You saw a last variable in here, which was can be seen. And if we go to the draw event, we just says if we can be seen, then we want to draw ourselves. So knowing this information here, if we go back to our parent in here, we will just say with each one of these placeable objects, we'll just set the can be seen to true. All right. So if we hit F5, we should almost have a working version here. If we hit build and then we click on the bomb tower, you can see that we've been deducted $50. However, we're not showing any placeables and that's because I forgot to add them to the room. So if I go to the main room, I have a layer here called placeables. All I want to do is zoom in and I'm going to put these placeable objects all the way along the outside of my walls and on the inside. So I'm going to skip ahead and have this done. So you can see I'm almost done. And if you're not using the IDE a lot, or should say the room editor, uh, what you can do is as long as you're on a particular layer, so this is an instance layer and I'm on the objects placeable. If I hold down my alt key on windows, 
I'm able just to left click and drag these into the room and it will create the different placeables for me. So you can see that I have done this and I have a whole bunch of different placeables here. So now if I hit F5, these will not be seen because they are false right now. And when I click on one of these, now they all come up. So the next step is gonna be if I left click on one of these, what do we want to happen? And actually, before we even do that, let's take a look at how we can use the mouse. Remember, in each one of these, we have a left release and we need to do a build tower. And then if we go to the parent event, because we are inheriting this, if we go to the left release in here, we need to attach it to the mouse. So let's actually attach it to the mouse first. Now, I know I only have one mouse object in my game, so I could do something like this, object mouse dot selected sprite equals image. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be correct. I'm just gonna use the create event. Yes, so the image will be set to the correct thing. So in each one of these, it's going to be set to whatever image we assigned here. So if I run my game one more time, and I click build and I choose a machine gun, you should see the machine gun following my, I'm following my mouse here. Now we need to clear that mouse once we do the left click and actually get the tower working. So inside the placeable, I'm going to go to left release and we have a bunch of notes here. We have a create instance tower, clear the global, clear the mouse, remove the selected placeable, and then hide the rest of them. So to get everything working inside the object in it, you can see that we have a global dot instance tower to build what we want to do is do a check on this particular one so if we go to the machine gun and we have a to do tower here basically what we want to do is anytime we select one of the ui elements we want to set this global instance to whatever tower we're going to be building so we will say object tower machine gun and now when we left release on the ui for this machine gun we know which instance we want to build now we can use this to be our check. So we could say, if this does not equal no one, then we know that we are going to be building a tower so we can come in here. Now we're not actually going to create the tower for now, but what we wanna do is clear out that global variable. Then we also need to use the mouse object here and clear out the selected sprite. Now we need to remove the selected placeable and that's an easy one with instance.destroy. And now with the rest of the object placeables, what we want to do is set them to be so they can't be seen. So we say can be seen equals false. And I have an error here, unnecessary expression. All right, that went away. So now if we hit F5 and we select our build menu and we select uh, the slow tower, which we'll use all our money. If I click on one of these, you can see that everything's been reset. I can click build. However, I can't click any of these towers. So let's close it again, reload it. So I can show you that when I build a bomb tower over here, and then I select a machine gun, that placeable item is now gone because it will be used as an actual tower. So yeah, we are build menu is working here. We're able to continuously build things. And yeah, I think it's working pretty good. And you can see our cache is now at zero, so I can't select anything else. Now I can always hit this close button to close my actual menu. So anyway, we have our build menu working. The next thing is going to be getting the towers up and running and then the enemies and waves. Thank you all for watching the video. Please leave a like or comment in below and check out my Patreon to find more tutorials and downloads and early access to these videos. A special shout out to the following in no particular order. Paul, Annie, Robert, Alex, Ian, Ashby, Edward, Darfwolf, Angel, Victor, and Ville. Once again, thank you all for the support. Please don't forget to subscribe.